It was in 1876, in a Victorian workshop rather like this one, that Sir Francis Galton constructed a contraption called the Galton Board. Galton wanted to demonstrate why the heights of different people, a seemingly random characteristic, actually vary within a population in a very recognisable, orderly way. The Galton Board is math in motion, using beads negotiating an array of pegs to demonstrate how the outcomes resulting from a large number of random events are normally distributed. It's the very same bell-shaped distribution we see when measuring the heights of individuals within a population. But rather than the pegs on the Galton board, the randomness is created by the multitude of factors that combine to affect a person's height. The ingenious construction of the Galton board produces this normal distribution every time. But there's more that it can teach us. One of the world's first social scientists, Francis Galton, can arguably be considered the father of modern statistics. Through his groundbreaking work studying heredity, how characteristics are passed from parents to their offspring, he developed many of the concepts still used today in statistical analysis, such as standard deviation, correlation and percentiles. Perhaps Galton's biggest contribution to statistics is the concept of regression to the mean. But it's a phenomenon that still causes confusion, even today. He started looking at how height is passed on as one of the uh, characteristics uh, within families. And he noticed that the tall parents didn't necessarily uh, produce equally tall or taller offspring. The children of, of those very tall parents, they tend to have heights which are closer to the mean height of a population. And interestingly, if you have very tall children, it will tend to be the case that their parents actually have heights which are closer to the mean of the population, which is a sort of counterintuitive phenomenon. And that really puzzled him, so he looked at what, what is the principle there. What's actually happening here and what Galton discovered is regression to the mean. This tends to occur whenever we have a process which is either partly or wholly determined by randomness. Quantities like heights which are partly deterministic but partly random, we get this phenomenon of regression to the mean. Maybe the, the height of the parent has some influence but maybe nutrition which is more of a random factor has some influence. It might be that a very tall parent has just had good nutrition in that generation uh, but that their child won't necessarily have the same nutrition and that might tend to pull them back towards the mean of this population. Although Galton discovered regression to the mean through his work on heredity, it actually has nothing to do with genetics. Regression to the mean is, is purely a statistical phenomenon. It's not due to any genetic process. It's just the fact that there's randomness in how tall you end up being that tends to mean that uh, you, the children of very tall people will end up being slightly shorter than them, slightly closer to the mean. But it's, it's a purely statistical process. It's nothing in, in our genetics which said that tall parents will have slightly shorter children. And you can understand why by looking at the Galton board. The normal curve is essentially an indicator of the likelihood of certain outcomes for particular types of event. When you have extreme uh, cases of something happening, the likelihood of that same thing becoming more extreme next time is actually very small the more likely outcome is going to be closer to the mean, which is described by the normal distribution. So if you look at how those ball bearings fall, if one falls in the extreme position, it's very unlikely that the next one will come there. All of the other space will come before that. What you might do is, is to take the 10% of the beads which ended up furthest to the right and run them down the Galton board again. And what you would see is that actually these beads would be distributed evenly on either side of the mean, either side of the middle of the Galton board. And that is effectively demonstrating this idea of regression to the mean. Just because the beads were far to the right in one run of the Galton board, because it's a completely random process, there's no reason why they should be far to the right on the second run. In fact, they will tend to be clustered around the middle. This may seem obvious, but you would be amazed at how often this phenomenon is overlooked when studying data, even today. Analysts have to be meticulous to avoid being tripped up by the effect and jumping 
to false conclusions. The difficulty is being able to determine whether changes in data have a direct cause or are simply the result of random statistical fluctuations. Regression to the mean can be seen all over the place. You can see it in test results, for example. So you might get some students that are good uh, and by luck on, on one test end up getting an extremely good mark. You might have other students who are not so good and again by bad luck, for example, they get a very poor test result. So you might look at how should you treat these two different cohorts of students. Uh, presumably you should praise the ones that have done well and you should maybe punish the ones that have done badly. But you might find on the second test that the, the luck for those students is reversed. So the good students may still be good but they might not get the good luck so they might go back towards the mean. Uh, similarly the, the bad students who, who got the bad luck in the first test might get slightly better luck and they might do better which is a classic example of regression towards the mean. The problem is that then the, the teacher concludes well I praised these students who've now gone backwards, the good students, and I punished the students who, who did badly and they've done better so maybe I should just punish all my students in the future and hopefully they'll do better but of course that's just a fallacy, it's, it's something which uh, would happen anyway because of this phenomenon of regression to the mean. Although there will be regression of results back towards the average, there might still also be a causal relationship between the teacher's actions and the student's scores. The key is determining whether it was significant enough to outweigh that inherent statistical regression. And one of the best ways to do that is for a study to include what's called a control group to take a, a cohort of students who haven't been punished or praised and seeing how well they perform would clearly highlight the, the issue of regression to the mean in, in these students. The lack of such measures can totally invalidate the results of a study and if it weren't for Sir Francis Galton and his Galton board, we might never have known why. If you would like your own Galton board for use in your school, museum, office or even at home, then go to galtonboard.com.